our chest and the back of our shoulder all at once. All right, so we're gonna get into, you guys are gonna watch me deadlift today, which is gonna be fun. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, not deadlift. Wait, is it back day? Mm, no, it's chest and legs day, I bet. You guys are gonna watch me squat and bench press today. guys, if you do all of these, and then you pay attention to how you feel the whole week, and then like next week you could like skip it, and pay attention to how you feel, the, the difference is so drastic, and it also, the, the difference becomes more noticeable the longer you've done it, versus when you stop, so like if you've done it for like one day, and then you stop, or like one week, and then you stop the next week, you'll feel it, but it will be crazy. If you do it for like two months and then you stop for, for one week, you'll feel like a crazy difference because it's compounded to a lot of progress at that point. So it kind of drags you back a little bit and you'll feel what you used to feel like and be like, dang, I used to feel like this all the time. I think that like almost every time I exercise. Okay, so we've gone all the way through the upper body with the exception of the hands. So let's do some of that stuff. So we're gonna first work on our arm. So what I want you guys to do is you're gonna put your hand so as if your your palm is facing your your shoulder, right? And then you're just gonna push. We're, we're stretching out everything in the elbow, like right down there. And then let it go. We're gonna do that five times. So push down. Oh, I'm gonna do this way. Push down. Let it go. Push down. good to line everything up, remember, wrist, elbow, shoulder, you know, and then I can go here, see, I need to be a little bit more like there, this is really good for me too, because I'm about to go do some striking for you guys, So that gets rid of, or that gets, takes care of the, the whole bottom chain. Now we're gonna do the top chain. So that's the reason why we do our palm out. We grab all of our fingers, including our thumb there, and then we pull straight back. And then this goes through the hand, the forearm, all the way up to the bicep, the top of the bicep. And we just keep it like that. Same thing on the other side. So palm up, grab all of our fingers, including our thumb, and stretch out all the way. Ten seconds. So now we've got all of our upper body taken 
care of. Let's go into lower body. So we're going to start off with butt kicks. So you're just going to swing your leg back, keep yourself in the butt on each side. Make sure you keep your legs lined up, see? Now I'm staying on each side with my foot. We're going to do 10 on each side. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to make sure you're caught up. I'm going to go grab some water. So next up is going to be straight leg kicks. So we want to drop one leg back. Oh, here, we'll, we'll give you a better angle for this one. All right, so we drop one leg back, right? We're going to lock that back leg straight and kick forward as high as we can. We're going to do that for five times on each side. Play with the torque in the direction of your leg, like being a little bit out, a little bit in, to find that spot where you don't get any kind of pops or resistance or anything like that. And that's gonna be your ideal path. Nice. Like I said, just five on each side. So that would get rid of, very nice, okay. So now what, we're, what I'm gonna also teach you guys to do, this will be like a double win. Not only will you get a stretch out of this, we're also gonna show you guys how to get deeper into your squat, right? So um, the depth of your squat has a lot to do with how your feet are aligned. So I want you to play with the width of your feet direction. So like, you know, some people, like your starting position could be directly straight forward, right? Your, your feet pointed directly straight. And then from there, we go wider and wider and wider until we're basically like full scale pigeon toe and feet pointing in side to side. That's obviously too much. We wanna play with like somewhere between like, we'll say like 70 and 40% or uh, 40 degrees away. So like if here is zero and, and out here is 90, we wanna play with like somewhere between like, no, let's say like it can even be, it can be subtle, it can be like 10 all the way to like 40, 50 degrees out. Maybe like 60 if you're really, really far set. Cause what that is, is like your hips are set different. So some people, their hips might be what? Pointing out here. Some people, their hips might be pointing directly straight. So find that spot. I know where mine already is, cause I've done it quite a bit. And, and then I want you to just squat as deep as you can. Now remember when you're squatting, if your body starts to go like this, like if you notice this part of your body starts to curve, you're too low and you need to stop. All right, so we're just gonna experiment with how low we can get. If you can get all the way to the bottom like this, that's good. Just, and we're just going all the way down into our squat, all the way back up. So this isn't about practicing our strength. This is about feeling out the mobility and trying to stretch it out a little bit. Trying to get yourself to go a little bit further down than you normally would. See, it's crazy how wide my feet are, because like that wasn't enough. Like here, I'll get almost no resistance all the way up, all the way down. But when I'm closer together right like that, my body stays really tight. All right, one more. We're just doing five of these. Nice. All right, so that opens up our hips really, really good. We're gonna do some more hip openers, but that'll warm it up. So now, let's go hip rotations. So we're gonna go leg up, leg out, right? And then up and out for five times. Four, four, five, five. All right, and so then we're gonna do the 
same thing backwards. So from out to in. is a really good warm up to make yourself better at kicking. Give your kick more base power. We'll need to do calves and then we'll do a little bit more in the leg specifically some hammy and then we'll get into the workout well, actually while i'm here all right so for calf we're gonna start with calf raises to warm it up so let's just do one set of ten so that's where we go up on our toes and back down right we're gonna do that for ten We've done a lot, uh, I mean, a 10 of those. We're going to go into the stretch that we get where we're pushing against the wall, right? So we put one leg, well, both feet are pointing towards the wall, straight, completely straight. This back leg is also straight, and then we just lunge into this leg until we feel the stretch. So we're going to come in it and out of it over and over again. So that's one. If you don't feel it, go deeper. Three. Four. Five. All right, now the other side. So, now we'll go into hamstrings, do um, our, our thighs, and then our neck rotation. So, for our hamstrings, you guys already know the deal. We're going to find an object that's nice and uh, even with either, either our knee, or uh, maybe like a little higher if you've got a lot of flexibility. We're going to put our leg up. Now, instead of going in as deep as we can, like we usually do, I want you guys to just go in and out. Keep the leg straight, chest out, lean forward, come back up. Lean forward, come back up. For five. Three. Four. Same thing on the other side. Ooh. Woo! This side is tight. Two. said, got one more leg thing to do. So I'm going to give you guys a couple more seconds because that's pretty hard that you get caught up. And then we'll, uh, we'll do our last two and then you guys can watch me get shriveled. Alright, so
So for the last thing we're gonna do, it's gonna be our quad stretch, but we're gonna do in and out of it the same way we were just doing. So we're here, right? We're gonna pull all the way into the depth of our stretch and then release it and come back. And just go back and forth like that. So you're probably gonna need an object if you don't have really, really good balance to keep yourself sturdy. Now, before we get to the games, right, let's do our most important body part. All right, so I want you guys sitting really nice with good posture. If you haven't done anything with us yet, this is going to be the most important thing for you to do. So sit. Sit straight, nice and even. Now, we're going to make neck rotations, but remember what I always tell you guys about these. We're not like just rolling our head around dead weight on our shoulders. That's really, really bad for our neck. The idea is that you have a marker or a pen at the top of your head and you're trying to draw a circle in the sky as far away from your body as possible. So your, your head's kind of going like up and then around while it's far away. So think about it like that while you do it, you know? So, cause that keeps you from dropping it. It keeps it like you're pulling up the whole time you go around. And that's kind of what you want to be doing, because that's what's going to create more space in all the areas that are probably really tight. So five times in each direction like that. arguably the most important thing that we do out of here um, because well for one a lot of us are gamers so we're taking a lot of uh, like posture related stress when we look down at the video games like for me for example my TV is on one side of the room which is something that I'm fixing ooh, hopefully today depending on whether or not I get my uh, my Ethernet cable I ordered a new Ethernet cable so that I could set up my um my room a lot differently and so the stream will the stream vibe will look pretty much the same but just like a little bit different location um mostly because i want to um, improve like the vibe like the atmosphere and it'll also make my my technology like a lot more condensed so i will have to look at the screen a different way but it'll be I think it'll work out really really well the way that I'm like um, considering organizing it so we'll see we'll see what happens why did my music stop um, so now luckily for you beautiful people that's why it went out of my playlist YouTube I see you okay so now we're gonna do some workouts so let's get crazy. You guys get to just watch at this point. So we're going to start off. I think I'm going to start off. I want to squat first and then just go straight into it. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. All right, so we're going to squat first.
we're just setting up for our warm up spots for the day. Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Bluey Fish 888. Let's go. How am I? I'm freaking awesome today. We just got a solid mobility workout in for y'all. Now it's my turn to get strong. So come, witness. Well, witness the warm up at least. Solid angle. All right, so we're just gonna do three quick sets of this to get blood flow in the legs. This is, I, I've explained this to you guys before. This is like an old testosterone technique. Perhaps buying some Mr. Clean Ultra Grip Gloves. Bro. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're here to work out, dog. Fitness and fitness only, my friend. So yeah, I'm doing three sets of these, so we got two more, and then we'll start with, I think I'm going to do incline bench today, it's probably a good idea, because we're going for like chest size right now, being that I trained up, um, uh, I trained up chest for strength, like over the last month. I gave it a little bit of a break, so now we're just gonna like maintain what's in there. So the point the point of squatting, mind you, is that when we squat we bring blood flow to our legs naturally in our body. So when the blood flow goes down there, it picks up a lot of testosterone from that area. And then when we work out our chest, we bring that blood that has testosterone in it into our heart. And that circulates the testosterone through that throughout the entirety of your body, and it increases your gains, it increases your muscle retention, and it's natural, so it's not going to have a negative impact like uh, doing actual steroids could, for example. So that's pretty fun, pretty sweet. Dang, I would have, I would have definitely caught that. Oh, okay. And that's 
funny too because I, I put the bench down. It was already inclined. <laughs> uh, I could have saved myself a step. I have a fun task for myself for work this coming week. Because what I've been doing is um, I've been taking all of my workout programs that I have. Which mind you guys, I have workout programs if you ever want them. And um, I'm making them all digital. So if anybody orders one, instead of me customizing it by hand, I customize it through all these different files that I made, like actual workout uh, client like uh, folder. And then it's like super systematic. It's got the logo at the top. It's got like all kinds of stuff. So I'm really happy about that because I was spending like the entire week taking all those workouts, putting them into logs. So then I can just adjust the numbers based on the person. And also obviously some of the workouts depending on if they have injuries or not because you always got to keep stuff like that in mind when you're a trainer. But yeah, it feels good. It feels good to be pretty much done with that. Now I still got to do um, class workout routines and make those digital. But I was more concerned with like the ones that people might buy for themselves. So now that that's done, I can go in to my phone actually and take all of the information because I save a lot of workout information and stuff on like Twitter and Instagram whenever I find it so I'm going to go through my likes on both of those and just like pull all the information and take notes on all of it so honestly it's probably going to be like a multi-week process because it's a lot like I'm sure I have like thousands of posts on each and obviously not all of them are related to that. They're all they're related to like everything that I like. But still, I mean, I have to go through them to find the, the fitness ones, you know? That's gonna be fun. successfully started leg blood flow. Now the same can also be said too for working legs in general, bro. So don't forget that. People who skip leg day, obviously you can still make gains in whatever you work out with. So your upper body is still going to get gains no matter what. But because your legs will naturally pull up testosterone into your body, by not working out legs, you miss all that extra testosterone that you'd be getting every single time you work your legs out. And so, while that might not translate to an insane amount of difference, it does translate to a difference. A, a pretty consistent one, too. Like, we're talking like pounds per lift, which is a lot, you know what I mean? Like you think sometimes that five pounds can be the difference between hitting 300 pounds or not. So if you did the testosterone hack your whole life, you don't even got to worry about that because you know you're getting maximum gain. But if you haven't now, now hold on a minute, if you've never done that, You get what I'm saying? You picking up what I'm putting down, brother? Right. So bounce the bar like here. I think 
so. Let us see. That is definitely off. Alright, so I said one hard, so let's go two on this side, one on that side. Alright, so let's start with the tens. I don't know why I put the twenty fives away either. I'll probably use those. Shirt's coming off, guys. I'm ready to hit some hit some of these sets, and then when I don't need the bench for a little bit, we go and do it because I'm a little toasty. Let me get some more water. What's up, King? King Nick, what's up, dude? How you doing, bro? Oh, you know what? I should update my title a bit. We are no longer doing the stretch. We're doing chest. Let's see if this is too high. Flex, got you, bro. Got you. Normally, that's a channel reward. But because you're always here. There you go, bud. Oh, yeah. That's like perfect height. Nice. All right. Maybe I will do more weight. Should be a little a little tougher. Uh, trying to feel it, you know. I'm 
doing like three different styles of bench press today too, so we're gonna do incline with the bar. We're gonna do flat with dumbbells for endurance too. And then I gotta do flies, um, chest flies. I think I'm gonna do those flat too. Cause uh, when I go to the gym and do uh, chest next time, I'll do all my decline stuff. I don't really have a lot of decline stuff in my house. So, that's what I, I need to get a decline bench. That would be really, really fat. Cause this one, like I could do it, but like I gotta rig it and it's kinda dangerous. So I prefer to just have one like dedicated for that. Bust that bad boy out whenever I need to do decline stuff. Because, yeah, that's like one of my favorite benches at the gym. And it's honestly one of the things I personally need like the most. Decline bench press is like my part of bench press I need to focus on the most. I know that already. But honestly, everything. Like, just because you need more of one thing doesn't mean you stop doing the other ones. Which is why we're here. That's better. Plug this in so it doesn't lose too much battery. Power. Power. real games right there, brother. <laughs> it's actually crazy. Because, like, in a normal sense, there are a lot of people who would have told me those areas of my, of my hands were just caked. And that, like, I was never going to be able to regenerate those parts of my body. And I cannot tell you how wrong they were, especially because I've been putting so much effort into it, even though, like, because in adulthood, everything slows down. So if I would have started doing this when I was younger, I probably could have um, overcome the, the development problems, like, way sooner. Because, like, realistically, to fix my hands, and now, granted, I'm still playing video games a lot, too. So if I stopped playing video games, that would also increase the speed. But that's not happening. So I've almost, like, with still playing them, Almost as much, definitely not as much, because like, you know, work and being an adult and whatnot. Um, I've been able to pull a lot of the knots out of my hands and like fill in a lot of areas that were like really, really seriously neglected because of just like what happens when you hold controllers and you're at the keyboard and you know, like all that stuff that we hear about when we're younger. So let, like, let this be a, a lesson for any of you kids that are watching the channel. Um, cause it's something I didn't take serious enough when I was younger and I wish I would have, is the idea behind people being like, oh, our keyboards need to have these kind of supports and our mouse needs to have a mouse pad with a bumper on it and blah, 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 blah. All that stuff sounds like a lot of extra nonsense that's just like unnecessary and like, oh, I'm a kid, I can just power through it and you can. But the idea is that you use those things because when you're an adult, the problems won't be as bad and they won't come on as quickly as they are for the rest of the population. And so like my hands is a good example of that. You know, like I use the keyboard and mouse, I use my controllers, like however it was comfortable for me. And that translates to 
usually your wrists being misaligned with your fingers while you use all the stuff. So yeah, um, that contributes to your fingers being misaligned and then that creates these gaps. So I can show you some of them. So like you see in my wrist right here, there's like this clear, like you can kind of see it like glowing almost because of the, the right here, this little spot right there. See how it's like lit up? That's because the tendon like really sticks out. See how it sticks out a lot? And then we've got this space right up here and this space down in here. Those areas on my wrist, used to be like gaps, not like a little bit of spacing where there's like some shadow. It was like an indent. And it's because my thumb, that, that bridge you see, the line that goes across right here, that was like a, a, a tendon. It's not a tendon, it's called a, a artificial fascia. And it's basically like your body makes fake muscle alignments to match whatever your movement patterns are. So since I was using my thumb that way all the time and not using it in other directions, applying force in other directions and stuff with my thumb, the only part of the thumb that got used is the part that leads that way. And so the body builds up layers over and over and over again in that direction that you're only moving and not in the other directions. And then eventually that overpowers everything. And at that point, that buildup is not how your body's supposed to be aligned. It's based on the movement, not your biological like form. So. Because of that, a lot of the times, once it takes over, it also shifts that body part out of the correct line, lining position. So like, a good example is if you look at people's fingers, you know how some people's fingers, like you can kind of see it with my middle finger, because I broke this finger one time, a long time ago. So, you see how it goes up straight, and then it veers off a little bit, oh, this way? Right? And then like all my other fingers, like this, my ring finger is perfectly straight. My pointer finger is a little off even, and I've never broken that. So. My pointer finger is a perfect example of like, see that slight deviation where it's like, it's almost like, or no, it's like that kind of. That comes from the tension that's inside my hands still to this day. That's artificial fascia. And it's pulling that, that part of the finger um, off the side a little bit because of the tension. It's kind of like if you had a cable pulling it from that side. Even if it's straight, that cable's gonna make it lean a little bit to that one side. That's exactly what's happening inside your hands. And like, your whole body, you know? Like, it could happen to your knees, it could happen to your hips, it could happen to your ankles, it could happen to your everything. And so, if you fix the direction that you move in, and you move in the right direction over and over and over again, you build back up those areas in the gap. And at first, it's really hard, because the part that's taken over, it wants to keep taking over. So, you have to sort of like force it into submission while you move the other parts of that body like area, whether like let's just use my thumb for example. So I would have to press down, this is how I fix that stuff. I press down on the tendon or the, the artificial fascia that's like there. And then allow the other parts of my thumb to exercise without it. And then they get stronger. So that's a little, uh, a little tip for you guys to improve your joint health. And for me, it translates to a really good benefit of getting stronger and faster. But for a normal person, it becomes arguably just as useful when it comes to um, your body not hurting long term. Like a good example, since we're talking about thumbs, would be arthritis. The more joint health and overall 
mobility you have with each of your limbs, the longer it will take for stagnation to set in. One of the most famous forms of stagnation is arthritis. And let me tell you guys, as gamers, as computer users, as desk workers, and, and, and the fact that those occupations are all the most um, popular and will continue to be the most popular occupations that humans have in modern society. It just means that the, uh, the amount of arthritis that we see throughout our society is only going to increase in percentage unless the population starts to take stuff like what I'm talking about very seriously. So you better believe your boy is probably going to get it when he's old as dirt because of what the, the stuff that I do. And granted, I still use them. So that will translate into um, losing some of the longevity because I like to like really push myself in my workouts. So that translates to a slight lack of longevity. And we see that within power lifters because they go to the extreme. And we know how in the, in the extreme sense... Power lifters usually have things like bad knees, bad elbows, bad hips when they get old because of the consequence of using those things, like I said. And um, that's just something they have to deal with. So the point, the point of me doing all this stuff for myself is because I didn't want to just be stronger and have better posture. I wanted to, to keep those benefits as long as I could. So, you know, I'm playing with that gap of like long, or I'm playing with that, that, that line of like longevity and strength and trying to walk it as like finely as possible, which is obviously a game in itself, but um, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a good time. All right, so we got to do a dumbbell bench now, and then I'll go into some triceps. What time is it? Something I'm going to do soon is experiment with angles and find like the best filming angles for um, the workout stuff and then I'm going to make shelves in my room, in my workout room, that will be at the right height. Should be pretty cool. Woo! Yeah, it's kicking my butt. Kicking my butt. I've been pretty happy with my gains progress though, because like I'm not working out as hard. I was trying to bulk up a little bit more. Ooh, and look, okay, wait, chat. This is one of my favorite things that I've ever done physiologically to myself because I was taught, like in relation to even the conversation we were just ha having, where there's certain things you can't fix, I was also taught that genetics means that your muscles are just what they are. Like, so genetically you're born with your muscles like that and that's it, that's what your muscles are going to look like. You can make them bigger, you can make them stronger, but that's the form that you have, right? False. Absolutely false. The only thing that's true about that statement is your bone structure, mother fathers. You cannot change your bone structure. You can make it bigger, but you can't change it. So your hip alignment, for example, what we were practicing earlier, that's always going to be the, or the same. You can't make your hip alignment more straightforward. Your, your hip bones are shaped the way your hip bones are shaped. But the muscle insertions on all of your body can be drastically improved and changed. Let's show you guys. So when I was younger, this part of my chest was way, way more like gapped out, right? So like this gap was huge actually, and it was really deep. Uh, and I was just born like that. Like my whole family's like that. It's like a uh, a gen it's a genetic thing because if you don't use something you lose something right and then if you don't use it Your body thinks that you don't need it and when you have kids it passes down the fact that you didn't need that thing And so that's why we have um, genetic 
um, problems passed down or muscular related because like obviously like that could be arguable for everything but we won't go there I'm not a doctor I'm not gonna talk about that I'm talking about muscle physiology because that's what I specialize in and I know that this is all fat right so now you can look at the gap now again it was like like my mu my chest muscles probably started oops no hang on, hang on, hang on. here yeah my chest muscles probably started like this far over so like all this right in here this whole section and you can see how they're a little bit more like cut because those are new like they didn't exist before and if i go like this you can see how the muscle will extend all the way into the inside so like i can i could develop the chest to meet each other at the bottom a doctor told me that i was never going to be able to do that um but he was a doctor he wasn't uh a, like an exercise specialist and he actually like realistically didn't work out at all now that i think back to who he was as a person so like um, the insertions of your muscles and the way that your muscles are developed is completely based off of exercise routine and your form and your exercise. So if you want to improve the way that a certain area looks, all you have to do is just focus on the part of that, the range of motion for that area to bring out that part. So for example, in here, it's the, the very like extreme because you can see already it pulls on these, these uh, chest muscles that are really deep in there. So for me, I have to go really, really far into that. And now look, you can already see like this part of the muscles coming out more. Even though normally when I'm passive, it, it like sucks itself back in and it's not there. So that can be true for like your entire body. And a lot of people that miss out on progress that they could have made because they just think it's not even possible, so they don't even try. But it is so rewarding, like I said, when you spot something that was never there, or especially when you conquer a problem people told you you were gonna have your whole life. bigger dumbbells. I guess it's an accomplishment, right? <laughs> insertions like I wish I could show you guys my biceps look like beforehand my bicep like okay you see how when I flex it it stops like here my bicep used to be that like like when I would stretch my arm all the way like this you see how now it goes down all the way into the elbow that's like new like well I mean relative to like a few years when I was younger and I first started working out that like stoppage that gap used to exist even when I would extend my arm like this that gap was still there at the bottom like the muscle would start like up here and go up and a lot of people will tell you like your muscle your bicep depth is just genetic it's never going to get better blah 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 but that falls right under the category of the conversation we just had where the form your, your range of motion and how you attack that muscle is really what's going to determine which part of the muscle you work out so if there's a part of that muscle that you don't normally have in good amounts or that your, your family and its genetics lacks, and if it's that case, it's even more important for you to address. So then you training that area to address that area that's been neglected will not only make your body look better, it'll teach your genes to pass down the ability to repair that spot to your children. 
So like, I allowed my muscles to degenerate for a really long time unintentionally just because like I didn't know anything about exercise. I was a kid. I was playing video games. You know, like all these factors that like make you like completely unaware of what you're doing to your body. Mainly me being a kid, you know, more than anything and not having someone to like teach me the exercise science behind it. So, so the cool thing is like, so because I let my body degenerate to that point where basically like not every part, but like pretty much everything except my core and maybe like my lats. No, no, even my lats. So basically just my core was the only part of my body that didn't need serious correction. Like what we're talking about, right? So there was gaps in literally all of them. You see the one in my chest, we already talked about that one. But I showed you guys the leftovers of the ones that was in my thumb. And the, the same is true, like my ring finger still has them. Um, so like at this point, the only ones that I still have to like really fill in and complete is my lower chest, my ring fingers, and my knees. There's some knee, knee tendons that need to be brought out. Like I could show you guys too here. So it gives it like another lesson. You can see how here it all comes up to this point. And that looks really balled up, so to speak. And now if I stretch out, you can see the gap, right? So now my intention is to take my, my quad and to extend it so that it comes all the way down to the knee. Because you can see like on this side, it does. But there's, we're missing a little bit of development right in here as well. And that will really cause it to look more of like, like that, that thigh muscle bump above someone's knee that you'll see when somebody has a lot of muscle strength. And so look, when I, it translates like into the lower area. So because there's a gap here, it also translates to a gap here. And so there's tendons right in this area that can be brought out more, right? So from doing that, and then passing on the genes of my body physiology, going through its life, gaining these problems, and then me using my adulthood to frantically, I, frankly, it has been pretty frantic, like after I realized how much work there was to be done, uh, addressing those problems and fixing most of them, and like ideally before I have my kids or as I have kids, fixing all of them so that I pass down uh, a, gen, a, a gene set that has both the knowledge of gaining that problem and of filling it in and gives that to them right away. What that'll translate to for my children is that they'll probably still get the same ancestral issues, chicken legs, um, undeveloped lower chest, uh, you know, random stuff like that. But because I've been addressing it my whole life, my genes are gonna pass down to them the ability to address and, and overcome it because that's what I've been doing. So like my body is gonna pass down the necessity for that. And that's kind of what happens when we see people develop weird illnesses as a result to like chemical uh, poisoning when they pass some their genes down to their kids. That stuff comes from your body's reaction. So it's like, like the chemical does a thing to the, to the host, to the parent, and the parent has some kind of negative effect, right? Like what, maybe it's like, like let's use, let's use alcohol, right? That's a good chemical substance to compare. And it's pretty straightforward, we all know it's bad, so it's a good, it's a good example. So let's say the, the, the parent is a really big drinker, right? So their liver is shot, obviously, drinkers. And they're gonna pass
pass on the fact that they drank a lot, genetically speaking, into the physiology of their child. Not in the sense that the child's going to like be ready to drink when they come out of the womb, but rather their liver will ideally develop. Now, that's just to say if the parent's liver didn't fail. If the, if the parent's liver didn't fail by the time they have the, ch the child, the child's liver is going to develop to have more resistance to alcohol. That could translate to a lower tolerance, that could translate to less physical damage when it gets impacted by the alcohol, whatever. But like, because of the chemical impact on the parent and what organ it affected, the child that's born from that, the, the DNA adapts to that issue, that challenge in the previous generation and tries to overcome it in the new generation in the form of having, let's say, a stronger liver. Sometimes those reactions genetically aren't beneficial because the body's not perfect, so it doesn't know exactly what to do, especially if the chemical, uh, the chemical damage is really complex. So if it's something like neurological, for example, then maybe your body's way to deal with that would be to, to develop, develop autism, or to develop um, like late in, late in later stages of your life schizophrenia. And it's not because like something happened to you even, to cause schizophrenia or, or whatever. It's, it's just like because of what happened to your parents and the way that, that the genes they passed on to you tried to improve, there ended up being a disparity there instead of a benefit, right? So the opposite is also true. When you pass down your genes to your kids, if you, if you fix the problem, chances are they're going to have a mutation that will allow them to fix the problem too because they knew it was an issue. Their body, their body knows that it was an issue for you because you passed down the gene codes of like, Hey, I used to look, I started out like this, and then I, I used to look like this, and now I look like this because I did all this stuff. And the body's like, okay, so I gotta be prepared to do all of that stuff because that's what you did to fix this. And I'm gonna be born with the same problem because I'm your kid, but I wanna get rid of the problem better. And then three generations down, if everybody's addressing that problem generation after generation, it might not even be an issue anymore, or even better off, not just not an issue, it might literally become a genetic strength that your, your ancestry has because you've addressed it for so many years, now the genes are strong in that area. They're like, I know this is a problem that people go through and that we went through, you know, a hundred years ago, or whatever it is. But now because we've addressed it so many times, it's, it's the opposite is true. So like, like the chest, my chest issue could be a great example. You know, like I have this gap right there. I'm trying to fill it in. Now if my child works out chest and addresses the same chest gap in themselves, and then they teach their son how to do the same thing, then by the time my great grandkids are born, their chest could like, be, they could be born with their chest fully filled in and that not even being a genetic problem anymore. So that's kind of what I'm going after when it comes to like the long-term effects of exercise, because obviously there's short-term benefits that I feel on an individual level, like right now in my life. And I've talked about all of those to you guys a bunch of times. You know, being able to do more in your day because you have more strength, more strength equals more energy total. More total energy means more things you can do in one evening, or afternoon or whatever, before you have to rest. And it helps a lot. That's one of the re honestly one of the reasons why I have the moment, of, like really often, where people will be like, geez, Angelo, you're not tired yet? It's like my favorite. <laughs> I'll be like doing something with a group of people or like, like hiking or like helping somebody move or whatever. And like generally, physically, I'm usually the smallest person there. Obviously like not muscularly, but like, like weight, size, height, most of the time. I'm, I'm shorter than most of my friends because my friends are like all really tall. Most of them are above six foot. So it's funny to have them like be so much bigger and weigh so much more. And then we're doing something and they're like, bro, I gotta sit down. And I'm like, all right, let me know when you're ready. <laughs> triceps now. I'm going to do a lot of triceps today because let's give you guys a better angle. 
Yeah, I'm going to do a lot of triceps today because uh, I don't do arms for like four days or something like that. Three days. I don't remember exactly, but it's a while. All right, that might be a better lighting angle. Let's see. Oh yeah, for sure. No, you know what? I could do better. That's why I need a film crew. <laughs> Can you imagine? That honestly be so epic. A ring light would probably help. I need more. More tension, damn it. Trying to get swoller than the foot. Honestly, I should be doing the cables at the end. So, want to see something cool? Right, let's see if we can see it on the side. Yeah, yeah, you can see it on the side. You see on my tricep, now it, like, it's got this line right here, and that line leads into this forearm muscle, which now connects to the rest of my forearm. I've been chasing that connection for like four years, because I knew it was possible. Like I learned, when I was learning about uh, muscular physiology, I realized something really, really important that ended up completely changing my approach to training. Cause at first I was like, if I get bigger, I get stronger. If I get leaner, I get faster. So I get bigger and then I get leaner and then I get bigger and then I get leaner and I get stronger and faster and stronger and faster forever, right? That's how I was thinking. Until I realized it's not just about the muscle getting bigger, there are other factors that contribute to strength. And the biggest factor to contribute to strength isn't muscle size. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. That's not true. The one of the biggest factors that contributes to strength while also being muscle size is actually muscle connectivity. And that goes from part to part, not just one muscle at a time, right? So there are these things that are called myofascial lines, right? You have these like networks of muscle chains that work through your entire body and they connect to everywhere, like even into your teeth and shit. That's how crazy it is, right? So these areas, they all contribute to strength that you have, but they have to be connected for the strength to come out or there's nothing for them to grab onto, except your bones, which is what most of our muscles, believe it or not, in the general population are doing. Most people are only strong because their muscle is so good at latching on to what little connections it has to the joint, along with the attachment it has to that particular bone, right? So you can, like, you can think of it this way, like the bicep, localizes here, it's attached to this part, so it uses its foundation here to pull by squeezing, right? Makes sense, it's just like basic muscles, muscle sciences. But what we don't know is that there's a capacity for that connection, not to just grab here, but to grab here and then into here. And then when it goes into here, there's also forearm muscles that go up into here. And the only way we can get those is if we train them to connect to each other, right? And so once I realized that that was part of the process, I actually started focusing on that more than the other thing because you can only have so much bodily development until you get a certain age. And then once we're like 35, 45, 
we stop being able to like develop, and now that's theoretical. I'll test that when, as I get to those ages, but, <laughs> um, and we start only being able to grow in actual size, not in development. And so if that's true, then we have to maximize our muscle insertions as early as possible. So that was kind of like my intention behind all of that. I figured if I can connect as many muscles as I can before I hit that like 45 age, 35 age, then what that'll translate to is the maximum amount of strength my body is capable of as long as after those years I keep training for size and strength. And so that, that tricep forearm connection that I just showed you guys was one of the first ones I knew was true and possible. And I started to like go after. So you have the obliques, right? That's like the, the group of muscles that runs right here that looks like kind of like a rib cage. See them? Those guys? Right? So they grab onto the sides of your core. So you can interconnect those. But I already done that. So now they can also connect, you see this? That can go this way and this way. And then these can lock together too from the side. So right here and right there, those are the muscle connections I'm trying to do next. And then after them is the knee. And so you guys can do this too. It's just about like depth. And so then at that point, the way to train it would be to work that part out with no, with no extra weight. So like the type of squats we did earlier, that's a great example. That's what's gonna bring it out in your knees and your hips. Doing like really, really deep squats. And when you get to the top, really, really like, emphasizing the uh you know the, the straight straightening out that'll hit a little bit deeper into those into those connections too a lot of people don't go that far they'll just they just squat squat and they stop like like here but there's that little extra like oof you know where you're like everything locks now if you have weight on you're not supposed to lock your knees but if there's no added weight then it becomes safe for you to do that for a split second just to get that extra development and come back down so you see how training with weights can make you miss a lot of that stuff What's up, Trey? Welcome, welcome to the stream. But yeah, so that's like a really, really important for um, balancing your workouts and improving your overall progress and strength. Because a lot of people will just try to do that. They just try to throw squats on the bar, I mean, uh, uh, weight on the bar and do squats and do their, their sets of 10 and then they're done, with, they're done with their squats. But like every once in a while, you should take a, a break from the bar and just focus on hitting depth, emphasizing the peak, slowly going through the motion, and like really emphasize all those little parts that you might miss. Because for some people, it might not be the top or the bottom. It might be like somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? Like maybe maybe your muscle's like, like big and there's a little bit of a gap and then it gets big again. Then that would mean that somewhere in the middle of the, of the rep, you usually, can't, you, you, most of the time it would be like momentum stuff. So like a good example, the only way to get like a gap in the middle of the muscle would be like if you go to the bottom and you explode up because then you can miss that central part and you only get like the bottom push and the top catch as muscle development. So little things, just sitting in your chair. Well, here's your call to action. You know what I mean? Get up, get moving. If you didn't yet, plan when you're gonna work out today. It's always important. Do I have YouTube? I do. All of my links for my pages are on my about section in the little sidebar that's like YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff's right there. You can just click on those and they'll take you right to it. Um, yeah. I'd say my biggest platforms, like my most used platforms are probably Twitch and Instagram, but I'm on Twitter quite a bit. Um, YouTube is more like my music player but you'll see some good stuff in there. Um, I need to do overhead tricep extensions. 
Yeah, actually, YouTube is my next content goal. I'm working on some business-related stuff, like what I was talking about earlier with my train programs, so that they have them ready to sell online. Can we follow each other on YouTube? Yeah, go ahead and subscribe. I'll subscribe to you later when I uh, go back onto my page. Where's my phone, actually? Aha! Okay, I got plenty of time. Just had to make sure I'm not going to be late. I got people to train on in a little bit. The link should be uh, YouTube, whatever, whatever, slash trigger tame. But like I said, you can find it on my Twitch page. You just gotta scroll down. If you can't find it, I'll, uh, I can send it to you later. Wow, I'm almost done, actually. Now that I think about it, all I have left is these chest flies. And then we're going to go do some uh, punching bag practice. Hey, okay, cool. Uh, I'm sure I'll have the notification on my page. I'll go back and I'll subscribe to you back. But first, we make games. Thy holy game. Yeah, the social media cleanup is going to be pretty, pretty crazy. I got a lot of stuff to do on it. Like one of the things is going to be going through all those likes. Another thing is reorganizing all of my playlists on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Trey Gibbertson? Gibbertson. I have never heard that last name before. It's pretty cool. I feel like it's really rare that I hear a, a last name I've never heard unless the person's like from another country. Yeah, links don't work in my chat. I do that to um, to stop spammers. But what you can do is you could type you could type like all of it without the .com because I'll know obviously, and then put a space where the .com is supposed to be, and then put the actual thing. But like I said, it'll show up in my YouTube notifications. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. I'll see it there. All right, one more of these. Then we hit them flies, baby.
freaking arms, bro. Holy shite. Them boys are crying. But wait a minute, but wait a minute, chat. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go. Dang, that's like, that guy's new. This little dude over here, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> I ain't even met him before. He seems like a nice guy. Oh, you know what? I gotta clean this. Always keep your gym equipment clean, chat. Don't be a nasty mess. See, look at all that. And you never would have known. That's literally from two people. Because I, I cleaned it the last time I used this, which was last week. And I, I only trained one guy with this band since then. So that gives you an idea. The bench, too. A lot of people think, like, oh, well, I'm wearing clothes when I bench press. But... It still gets really dirty. Like, I wish I would have known that when I worked at the gym. Because I used to work, I worked at two gyms for a really long time. First, I was just like like a gym attendant when I was in high school. And then I became a trainer later. And as a gym attendant, you know, they have you like clean. But nobody wipes down the benches, bro. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. The only people who wipe down the benches are the freaking members. And I know that's true from working there. And it is hella gross because... Like, from owning a bench now, and having seen what actually happens when you use one, like, regularly, even with clothes on, it still gets dirty because the sweat goes through your clothes. So always clean your shite. It'll last long, I promise. And it'll be less gross. Alright, these are gonna hurt. Oh, fuck. It's cool because I took like a little bit off, like probably like a week or so. Uh, I want to say like like about a week and a half ago, and it, it translated into me like losing a little bit of muscle definition, but I also got like more uh, more fat store on my body because the part that was already muscle kind of like um, degenerated into fat. And I'm noticing that like the opportunity for it to degenerate into fat also helped it to fill in certain areas that were already like kind of empty, which is super cool. Cause like, I feel like those areas would have been built up a lot slower just because they would have been strictly based on my rep development, like developing the muscle based on my rep count and stuff and how deep I go, like what I was just talking to you guys about versus like taking that time off helped for like 
the fat to fill in that area for me. So now I just kind of do the reps and it's already like fed in a sense, which is really dope. Trying to decide what I'm gonna make for breakfast. I think I have, well, like second breakfast. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make eggs and waffles. And then for lunch, I'll have fish. Okay. <laughs> All right, chat. Let's go punch shit. What do you guys say? You ready to punch things? Just clean my bench here. Dirty. See? Only three things. Alright, this has got to get clean after I wash. I got two sides left. And then I gotta wash that too. Alright, let's go outside. <sighs> What's up, Tiger? I need. Hey, Tiger said flex for chat. I got you, bro. Oh, that looks pretty good. Cool. Nice. And my brush is my car. up first. Did I come at the end of the workout? Just a scene change. I'm doing, um, here I got you on the flex first. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm just doing, um, cardio now. Striking practice.
I'll be right back. So that was that was for strength, like durability. Now I'm gonna go for endurance. Because like my goal is actually to break this. It's like an old piece of wood. It's not even that thick. But you know, punching a piece of wood like raw is crazy. So what I've been doing is like little by little, I'm strengthening my fist up so that I can break it. And then I'm gonna go from there to like new pallet wood. And then from the new pallet wood, I'll, I'll try to do two by, two by fours after that. See how far we can get. Those are a little red. You guys can't even see them because of the sunlight. Yeah. <sighs> Your elbow is next. Yeah, that's good. I got a lot of blood flow. So we'll switch it up now.
can't tie these harder. They're not gonna work good. I'm just gonna go barefoot. Let's take a shower after this anyways. Super McAlley. <laughs> I feel the blood rushing to my feet. Alright. No more power. No endurance. Again. Like I did with my punches. Now I'm done, Chad. Now I'm done. My limbs are red. My muscles are swollen. I'd say that's a successful workout. I gotta go retrieve my shit, but that's okay. <sighs> Whew. So I can probably show you guys now. See him? The redness, but not like bruised or anything like that. My foot, you probably see better, even. See? Free feet picks, chat. That's how you know I love you guys. Oh, okay. So, solid chest day workout. We're gonna get some more um, streaming in later. I'm gonna do a video game stream after I finish training people. So I'm gonna go eat, train motherfuckers, and then we'll get into that, all right guys? So look out for a Pokemon something stream. I don't know, TCG maybe, Unite maybe, we'll see, we'll see what happens. All right guys, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you guys for coming and watching me get large and in charge. We'll do it again soon, okay? <laughs> All right, y'all. I hope you guys have a good day. If I don't see you later, bye. Hey, don't forget that if you want to do this workout that I just did, well, obviously you can't do most of it, but I mean, if you want to do the beginning part that's meant for you guys that we did as a stretch routine, don't forget that as soon as I close this, it'll be published. You guys will be able to go to the video tab of my Twitter page. I mean, my Twitter page. Of my, of my Twitch page, and in there will be the most recent workout video. You can click it, follow along, do it now, do it later. At any point while it's up, you guys got a free workout class that you know is done by a professional who's thought it out and made sure that you guys will make good progress. All right? Hope you enjoy it. Hope you like the stream. I'll see you guys later today. Bye.